welcome to another episode of Crosshairs. We've got yet another nail-biting show for you this week with a quick look at Battlefield 3 and a very special interview with American pro wrestling superstar CM Punk. But right now, let's head into the news. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs passed away last week after an eight-year battle with pancreatic cancer. The former Apple CEO was 56 years old. The company has invited people to share their thoughts and memories with Jobs, while an outpouring of grief around the world has seen people leaving flowers and notes of condolences on the steps of Apple stores worldwide. In August this year, Jobs stepped down as Apple CEO due to his worsening health problems, turning the company's day-to-day -day operations to current CEO Tim Cook. A new survey into the gaming habits of Australians has revealed over 40% of Aussie gamers now buy games online rather than in traditional brick-and-mortar stores. The Digital Australia 12 study involved over 3,500 individuals, both gamers and non-gamers, and revealed that over 95% of Australian households with children over the age of 18 now include at least one gaming device. The average age of Australian gamers has also increased from 30 in 2009 to 32 in 2011. Bioware confirmed this week that Mass Effect 3 will be the first game in the series to offer multiplayer of any kind, revealing that the game will have cooperative missions. The publisher later revealed more details on the new mode, which will be called Galaxy at War. Largely separate from the Mass Effect 3 single-player campaign, the new mode will support up to four players, who will each take custom characters. Commander Shepard and team will be relegated to the single-player campaign. Character progression, along with weapon upgrading and levelling, will be built into the new mode. Any news headlines this week? Documents filed through the Australian Securities and Investments Commissions have revealed that Team Bondi owes a total of $1.4 million to its creditors and more than 30 Team Bondi employees. Microsoft has announced it will be making a standalone 320 gig Xbox 360 hard drive available later this month, which will also become complete with an Xbox Live download code for a free copy of LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. And finally, iPhone 4S pre-orders have surpassed 1 million in 24 hours. Now we're only two weeks out from the much-anticipated release of EA's Battlefield 3, and our very own community reporter on the loose, Mr. James Kozanecki, managed to track down Daniel Matrus during this year's Tokyo Game Show to talk a little bit about the ongoing fan reaction to the game and what it's like trying to sell a first-person shooter in the Japanese market. One three will to tap for Mister for this mission. You're with us. I think I just agreed to be ambushed. Why don't we just shoot ourselves and save them the trouble? Fans are always going to hype up their game, and they're always going to look at the, the other games and say, no, ours is better, and not saying anyone is better now, but we're definitely focused on what we're doing in the studio, and we're bringing our dream is coming true, Battlefield 3. We've been wanting to make this game for six years now, and here we are, just a month away from launch, and we're so ready to go. So uh, all the teams have been working really hard to make this game amazing. Uh, a lot of effort has gone into it, a lot of hours. Uh, a lot of expectations out there, but we're definitely sure we're going to meet them up. When you're working inside the studio or inside the walls of the studio, you play the game every day, you play test it, you watch, you see the progress of the game every day. It's when you look back a few months, you see how far you've come. So I think the big uh, eye opener for us was E3. We knew it was going to be big. So this is Battlefield 3. We're going all out with our marketing campaign on it. But when we raked home all of these amazing awards, we had a six-hour queue at E3, and everything was just amazing at E3. We definitely felt that wow we're doing something awesome right here. And then we went to Gamescom, we won the best in show at Gamescom, and we had the most ambitious setup ever. We had a jet, we had 64 player stations, we had eight stations on co-op in the same booth, and we had a 12 hour line. So yeah, we, we really feel the expectations, and uh, definitely know we're gonna, we're gonna match them. Bad Company 2 obviously sold very well here, very well recepted in the Japanese market. And uh, I was just down at the Battlefield 3 booth, and. Tons of fans playing, tons of fans loving the game. We're showing single player here for the first time and people are just loving it. So other than being a very good game, obviously, uh, we're setting out to localize Battlefield 3 to the Japanese market. Uh, so Japanese players don't need to read in English, they can play it in Japanese as well. Uh, which is a huge benefit for the market. And we see Western games are becoming more influential in the Japanese gaming culture these days, so I think that's the reason. With the single player campaign, uh, in comparison to uh, Bad Company 2 and Bad Company 1, the single player in Battlefield 3 differs quite a lot. Uh, we have a more authentic tone this time, the atmosphere is very important for us obviously. We're showing a war here, it's not a 
Jolly Road movie anymore. It's uh, definitely a war. It's more rough, more physical. You can actually feel the battle in, in Battlefield this time in the single player. Uh, so the reception has been amazing. People love it. Uh, they love everything from the lighting effects to the sound to the rendering to the storytelling, the storyline, the characters. A lot of these components come together to make an amazing single player game. Now, while Coz was out roaming the halls of Tokyo Game Show last month, our other reporter on the loose, Dan Capini, was spending the day at Yuke's Yokohama studio, where he spoke to three developers about the evolution of the WWE series and the challenges of having no real competition. As they've created the series over the years, their relationship with the WWE and with THQ has um, grown stronger with each year. As the three companies um, form a closer bond to each other, they start to realize uh, each other's needs and what they need to do to make the game better. So as the years have gone by, they've gradually um, had gotten more and more access to more and more materials, and then that's helped them to make the games. Just as if you were a baseball fan, and you, there was a game company creating a baseball game. You'd want them to create the game from the perspective of the fan and um, to actually live and breathe baseball as they're creating the game. And the same goes for them. Um, they feel the same way towards wrestling. Um, they love the sport of wrestling and just like you'd, create a, uh, you'd want someone to create a baseball game realistically, their goal is to create the game as realistically as possible and um, as the fans would expect it to be created. One thing that is, he considers an advantage as being a Japanese company creating the series is that the WWE is, like you said, an American federation. It's uh, an American sport. But um, the Japanese do have a history of wrestling sports. And um, they have that baseline of, of wrestling in them. But um, the other thing that they have is the ability to subjectively analyze the WWE from an outsider's point of view. So they're not within it, they're kind of um, on the outside of it, looking in. You're absolutely right in saying that there is um, no similar company where we can compete directly with. But um, he's not worried about that at all. Because um, one way to put it is fans will never be completely satisfied. Um, no matter how many moves they put in, no matter how many modes they add in, they always think this is going to be the perfect wrestling game. Fans are really going to love this. And they always get some complaint or something where the, the, the users will say, yeah, you put in the back suplex, but there's this match where this character does it with his arm in the back and it's a little bit different than the one you implemented. And what that means is there's always something to improve on. And not having... Um, a direct company to compete with um, may be a fact, but they always have the WW fans to compete with, their desire to compete with. So that's um, um, an inexhaustible drive to make a better game. And still on the topic of wrestling, there is so much wrestling in this week's show. Editor Randolph Rambusi was so excited when he heard that American pro wrestler CM Punk was in town last week that he went along to speak to the legend about his gaming habits, which wrestlers he thinks need more airtime, and what's wrong with WWE. Hey everyone, this is Randolph here. We're on a couch here in Sydney with WWE superstar CM Punk. He's going to talk to us a little bit about WWE 12 and also the wrestling scene in general. Welcome, CM Punk. It's really great to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so obviously, you know, since we are a gaming website, we're going to have to pepper the first few questions with gaming stuff. I'll talk about games all day. Let's do it. Come okay. on. So are, are you much of a gamer yourself? or I, I'm not the biggest gamer, but uh, I... I Without getting into too much details, I recently stumbled upon a new situation in my life that's going to get me to play more video games. So, uh, long story short, I'm, I'm not the, the biggest gamer. I'm more of a, especially when it comes to like modern stuff, like uh, you know, like Halos and stuff. I'm more of an excite bike kind of guy. I was going to say, like with, with, with your lifestyle, you, you wouldn't have much time to sit down and play a game anyway, right? No, but I, I no more rental cars for me. I just I just got a bus, so 
now I can let somebody else drive and I can play video games and watch TV. Now obviously, you know, WWE 12, it, it's coming out real soon and you're obviously in the game. And, and, and these WWE games have been around for quite a while now. Uh, wh what type of role do you think, uh, you know, games like that play in, I guess, introducing a new audience to wrestling? Do you think it's the main way kids nowadays get, get, into, get into wrestling or is it other, other, other methods? You know, I don't know if it's the main way, but it's definitely one of the, the biggest, you know. Uh, obviously, kids play video games, you know, so uh, video games evolve to keep up with the kids' tastes. And I know, I mean, WWE 12 it blows my mind when I look at the game, how detailed it is with tattoos and people's t-shirts and their moves and, you know, what, what everybody looks like and people, like the girl's hair, like, it's, I mean, it's insane, you know. So, yeah, that, appeal, that obviously appeals to children, which turns them onto our product, hopefully. And yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great all around. Have you, have you ever been unhappy with the way they portrayed you in a video game at all? No, I, I think, if anything, the, the video game makes me look a lot better than I actually do in real life, which is kind of <laughs> depressing, but that's, that's, a, that's on me, you know. Now, obviously, you know, you've been very vocal this year, uh, I guess, about what you, you know, what you think is wrong with the WWE. A lot of that culminated with the events around Money in the Bank uh, a few months ago, and, and obviously now you're back. I is it getting any better from your point of view, do you think? Slowly but surely, you know, and a lot of the stuff that I'm working on changing, you're probably not going to see for another 9 to 12 months. Like, I'm actually working on getting the ice cream bars back. So if anybody's out there, you're a wrestling fan, you remember the ice cream bars, I'm bringing them back. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a slow process. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. So, you know, uh, if anybody out there is, is wondering where all this change is, like, you gotta just be patient. In, in your view, what needs to happen straight away, though? Like, if you were running the show right now, what, what were the first few things that you'd do? Uh, less talking, more matches, you know? Um, guys and girls getting a, a better opportunity. Guys like Zack Ryder, you know? Uh, but I bet I, this, see, this stuff is happening, though. You know, uh, I've been pretty vocal backstage about Zack Ryder for a while now, and it's he's, he's starting to get his, his shot now. He's starting to be put on TV more prominently. Um, same thing with the girls. You know, uh, Natalia Neidhart and Beth Phoenix, I think, are, are, are finally getting their what they deserve. You know, I think they're awesome talents. And just uh, people getting to be themselves more instead of, like, you know, these made-up, fabricated, ridiculous characters that, you know, I think the, the audience can see through that. Uh, I was going to ask that, like, in terms of, you know, the guys and girls you work with backstage, who, who do you think deserves a, a bigger push? You, you mentioned a few names there already. I'm more apt to go with somebody who has heart and who has passion for what they do. Uh, and I, I think in the past the companies almost punish people, like, you know, uh, I mean, somebody like Natty, who, I mean, she, you know, she's, one of, she's heart, you know, it's in her blood. And to put her on the back burner and not give her anything to do, I think, you know, it's kind of insulting, you know, because, like, it's, she's not just a heart. I mean, she backs it up. She's excellent in the ring. Uh, and, and, you know, it, to kind of have her just on ice, you know, to me doesn't make any sense. You know, and I, and I honestly think, even from just a business standpoint, like, the girls aren't prominently featured when, you know, we're, and we're ignoring a, an entire demographic. There's, I mean, there's, there's little girls out there. I mean, these... These divas are, I mean, they're Wonder Woman, they're superheroes, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're missing the boat on that. Now that's about all we have time for on this week's show, sadly, but before we go, we must tell you what amazing goodies you can win just by visiting the GSAU competitions page. This week we're giving away five copies of House of the Dead Overkill Extended Cut on the PS3, which has been reclassified MA15 Plus Down Under for all you Aussies, as well as five PlayStation Move starter packs and five PlayStation Move sharpshooters. To win, just head on down to www.gamespot.com.au for slash comps. And that's it. Thanks as always for joining us and we will be back next week with more news, more interviews and more games. Bye!